What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we're going to take a look at my yard out here in Queen Creek, Arizona, which is a part of Phoenix Metro. You can hear the next door neighbor's dog. I got my dog Larry Berto right here, so that's his name. Let's go ahead and get started. So, what you have right here is solar lights. I recommend solar lights for your yard because uh, you don't have to run any electricity to the, these parts of your yard. So solar lights, you get these at Walmart, you can get them on Amazon. I'll even put a link below if you guys want in the description to these exact same products that I'm going to show you as we keep going. So this right here <clears throat> is a uh, passion fruit. Um, in the daytime, you'll see there's going to be passion fruit flowers. And then those passion fruit flowers turn into uh, actual little passion fruit, lilikoi, you know, from Hawaii. Uh, what I do to put these vines along the wall is I take a, any nail that you find on any job site and you just take a hammer in between the cracks and you just go one, two, and then it's in there. You don't want to go too far because you might crack the wall. So it's just a little finesse, put it in the, put the hole in there. And then you can see if you come in right here, you can see the lilikoi actually wraps around the, the nail by itself. So vines do that. And I like vines. My ultimate goal is to have vines growing all along these walls. I want all my walls to not be this color, but vines. So that's the goal. Here I have a creeping rose. And then over here, I have a nice uh, flower, flowering plant here. And then if you come in right over here, you'll see I have some cilantro, but I have like, some strawberries and these are ready to eat. I could probably eat that one right now if I wanted, but I'd have to clean it off. Um, actually, let me take this big one with me and we'll eat it after I clean it, uh, just to show you. And then, so, dude, yeah, so strawberries grow out here. You can see this is a pretty cool rose. This has yellow flowers and also white flowers. So it's like a dual color rose. That's what you call a creeping rose. Anyways, we'll keep on going. I have lots of peppers and tomatoes growing in this area. These are just coming up. Flowers in pots. Flowers in Arizona are seasonal. They're not always going to be um, flowering because in the summertime it gets so hot. Peppers like this, they do great. So they go from flower to pepper. And at this point, these could be pulled because they're already dry. Those are little Thai peppers. More roses, roses in the springtime, they'll just bloom all over the place. And being that it's middle of April, you can see these tomato plants, once they really start going, they get going and they go fast. So once they start going, it's on. But the hard part is to get them, you know, it's not even the hard part, the slow part is just getting them going. So um, this right here is a goji berry. This is a fig tree, the thing is, I'm kind of letting these trees compete for which ones are ultimately going to live out. Some of them will be stronger than others. Um, this right here is a plumeria. You can see the little plumeria leaves are starting to come. If you should see right here, you have the little leaves popping out. That's a plumeria plant. In the wintertime, you really have to protect those because they don't like... Um, get out of there, Larry. They do not like the cold frost. This is a lemon. These grow really good out here in Arizona. These are acacia trees. Some people think they're bean trees bean pod, because of the bean pod. They're not. This tree right here is doing really good. Actually, while we're at it, you can hear my irrigation is turned on. If you take a look right here. So I have three different lines of irrigation. I don't want all my irrigation going all at once. So I've divided it up into section A, section B, and section C. So um, the irrigation in the summertime, that way you don't have to come out here every single night. You can go out of town, you can camp. You don't have to always be here to water because you have irrigation. So irrigation in Arizona is a real big thing. This is a Chinese elm. Here's another plumeria. And plumeria, in case you don't know, is a um, is the Hawaiian flower that you get when you get off the plane and they give you a lei. You know when they say, oh, I got laid in Hawaii, L-E-I. That's the flower, a plumeria flower. But it's not flowering yet. But th this is um, this is uh, broccoli, you have lettuce. I've already pulled a lot of the lettuce. And here I have some cilantro, I have some parsley, some rosemary right here, tomatoes. So anyone who tells you things don't grow out here in Arizona, they're wrong. <laughs> well, actually, tropicals don't do too good here unless you make your whole yard really tropical. Like this is a mango, not doing too hot. Um, sago palm, orange tree. I've got little vines that I'm getting ready to grow up on here. Eventually they'll all grow together. Um, over here, I have a great example of not too long ago, this was a really small tomato plant that's just turned into a really big uh, tomato at this point. 
I mean, look how big it is. It's going to be huge. I mean, this thing's going to be a giant by the end of the summer. We'll have to trim it back clearly. But one of the benefits of trimming is it's going to put the it's going to concentrate the energy. So, uh, like when you trim these trees, you want to trim this right here so that the energy focuses on growing tall. So the same thing, if you trim this up or trim any fruit tree, you're basically making it grow more fruit by trimming its branches and not making it so tall. These are peppers. There's some basil. This one here is like a jasmine vine. It's kind of cool. Still, baby, this can grow. This can get in. By the time it's done, it can look like a tree. <laughs> I mean, after a couple years, it can look like a tree. Another acacia tree here. If you look right here, this is an acacia tree. Okay. And then this is mint. Mint, you got to enjoy the mint while it lasts in the winter and the, you know, fall, winter, and spring. But by the time summer, mint's not going to do so hot. <laughs> but this, this one I planted last year, it just died off. I had to cut off all the dead stuff in the summer and then by fall it came back. So uh, it's a resilient plant. It grows like wildfire, but it does die in the summertime. These wild fl flowers that you're seeing here, you can plant these, they'll grow great in the spring, but by the time summer comes along, you're gonna have to replace them. Typically what I end up doing is planting like a squash or succulents. If you get bored with planting flowers, you just plant succulents here and they'll be fine. This right here is a Barbados cherry. So you can see Barbados cherries, flowers coming in, looking good. This over here is a Cape honeysuckle or a Mexican honeysuckle. I can't remember if it was a Cape or a Mexican honeysuckle. This is a really good vine. They call it a snail vine. It's one of my best vines. I still use it, it's really good. In case you're wondering what kind of flowers these are, these are California poppies. They, they're constantly coming and going in and out. When it gets dark, they close up. When it gets daylight, they blossom up. And there's another rose right there, a creeping rose. You can see the jacuzzi's getting going. It's nice and warm. This is a, uh, this is a bougainvillea. A different, this is more of a tropical bougainvillea. Starting to have some flowers come in. They can be kind of messy though, the flowers. This is a guava. So this right here, this right here is a guava right here. Yeah, I've yet to get any guava off of it, it's over a year old. These right here, in case you're wondering what they are in the ground, those are sunflowers. So I've just thrown a couple sunflower seeds all across my yard and I want sunflowers coming up and they're growing. You can see they're in a couple different areas. This right here is a lime. Limes and all citrus grow really good in Arizona. You've probably heard that many times. There's another, that's a dwarf. Dwarf trees, you can make the tree, if you plant them close to the wall, just really small, they won't grow up and become really huge trees, right? So that's good. Uh, another thing that I have going on here is grapes. These grapes, for some reason, have decided to fluff up and kind of flower a little bit. I don't know why they're doing that, opposed to this one right here that's not doing that. But grapes in the wintertime, they look dead. You'd almost think you're grapevine was dead and then all of a sudden around about March 1st it just comes it just starts sprouting again and it comes alive again kind of what's happening with my Chilean mesquite over here so this right here is a Chilean mesquite it looks kind of dead because of the winter and it was getting overwatered and it got really hurt because of the monsoon last year you can see it kind of fell out of the ground so it's had to have a lot of like life support but it just now started to produce new greenery and you can see like some new greenery right here if you zoom in you'll see these little green sprouts coming out right here. So this new greenery is really good uh, sign for the mesquite. By the time it's summer, it'll be really green because mesquites are desert plants. They love the sun. This right here is not bamboo. It's a, it's a form of, it's, they call it a cow tail. My pond right now is really dirty. Uh, I, have a, I have an imbalance somewhere, somehow. Sometimes I've had it really clean where you can see everything, but at a time I have a problem right now, I need to figure out the filtration, but um, I probably need more plants. What happened was the pump gave out and it was working for a couple days and I had to drain all the water, but there's still a big problem in here. And it might be that there's a leak I, or, uh, where, the, where the dirt, where there's a hole in the tarp. I think that might be it, I don't know. So anyways, what I'm doing here, if you come over here, is I put these in the ground I want vines to grow over this, but these right here, the reason for this is I want the vines to grow up this. 
And so I have vines all over here, uh, blackberries, strawberries, raspberries, all that stuff over here. And I put this little tarp, and eventually I want everything, all the, all the vines and everything to grow over this. So it's just like one big green thing. And as I said earlier in the video, my goal is to make all of this walls vines. So I've got vines everywhere that I'm trying to make this all green. It's a really big challenge for Arizona, but it's possible. Again, another grape grows great here. Grapes will do great in the summer. This is another passion fruit. In fact, we have a little passion fruit coming in right here. There's a little baby lilikoi. All these little flowers, you can see one down here, but these are all closed up flowers. They eventually become the lilikoi. So more grapes right here, a bougainvillea, a Chinese elm. Look at this rose. It's a really nice rose. It's really colorful. It's got, you know, like an orangish yellow inside and then it's pink on that outside. Here's another really nice rose. This time of year, roses just go nuts. They love it. So this is a really pretty rose too, as you can see right here. I have a grape here getting ready to go. And then if you take a look at this artichokes, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. At least 14 artichoke hearts growing on here, probably more. So artichokes, this plant is over a year old. Last year it gave me about five artichokes. This year it's giving me double that. So artichokes do good. Here's another rose, just full, full on roses. If you like roses, in the springtime in Arizona, roses just show out. In the summertime they do okay. Chinese elm. And then, you know, right here, there's an avocado tree. It doesn't, it did not do good here. I don't think that avocado is gonna make it, unfortunately. Some, some of these tropicals don't really make it out here because of the cold weather and then the extreme heat. This is a lemon, a dwarf lemon lime here. And this right here is called an oleander. Right here, you have two different types of rosemary. If you like to cook, you just grow your own rosemary. Here I have mint. The other one over there is peppermint. Um, by the way, let me turn on the hose here. Another thing that I did was I put hose bids all along every side of my yard. And the reason I put the hose bids on every side of the yard was because I didn't want to have to drag a hose through my garden, right? Why would I want to do that? So I have these hoses here, over there, over there, and over here. So let's try the strawberry and see how it tastes. I just throw this in here so it was good just like you expect the strawberry to taste <laughs> um this right here is uh more of these flowers i mean these roses sometimes they can even grow like trees like they can get so big they grow like trees this one right here is an acacia or uh i'll say uh, azalea flower i've never had it much luck with the azalea between the extreme heat same thing and again, another problem with tropicals. This is a this is a papaya. You would think it would be kicking into gear with all the sun and stuff, but it's still deeply affected by the winter. Because it freezes here. One freeze can kill your tropicals if you don't protect them. These right here are called um, Tipuana tipus. Here's another one of those vines because those purple snail vines, because they grow so good, I decided to plant one here, and I want it to grow over here, but I also have a backup baby vine over here in case it, that one doesn't make it. Unfortunately, sometimes they, these plants don't always make it. So here I've got some stuff that definitely grows really good here. Uh, zucchini grows good here, squash grows good here, and so does uh, hot peppers, bell peppers, all grows good here, especially in the spring tomatoes. I got some carrots in here. Carrots grow great here. Easy peasy. No problems. Here, eggplant. This eggplant is actually a carryover from last year. And if you were to come in here, you would see just uh, a variety of different things. Carrots. I just basically planted a bunch of seeds, tomatoes and whatnot. And I'm just seeing what kind of makes it. I've got chive. I've got broccoli. I've got a lot of different little uh, seedlings. And uh, before I wrap this up here, this right here is a 
If you haven't already liked the video and you do like this video, please do like the video and subscribe to this channel if you like stuff like this. But this right here is a um, wild turkey fig. So this is a fig. Again, just like grapes, figs look like they're dead in the, in the winter. But then by the summertime, they just come flaring back and they do great. Here's another Chinese elm. I really like Chinese elms. These are really good trees to grow here. You've got this little glass hummingbird that you know you pick up. <laughs> just fun stuff to buy. Uh, this is a pomegranate. I don't know what the deal is with pomegranate. Another sago palm. And then I put in these planters here. I put these little succulents. They flower really good, especially in March, early April. But um, we'll see if they keep flowering, but they look pretty good, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can see, I mean, if you want guaranteed stuff to grow out in Arizona, just plant cactus. Cactus is low maintenance, really easy, but if you wanna grow evergreens and green stuff, you're gonna need a lot of water. So anyways, thanks everyone for watching this video and liking it, if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next one. If you subscribe, turn on the bell, and thanks for watching.